What actually made you want to pursue a career in hip hop? It just seemed pretty cool. Rappers, <laughs> big gold chains, you know, bitches. But I ain't seen no gold chain. You ain't wearing no gold chain now. <laughs> Shit, you know, I mean, you know, it's not showtime yet. You know what <laughs> okay. I mean? Just come with the crazy trinkets. So um, you started off rapping. How did you get into DJing? Because, you know, I already interviewed like a lot of artists and most of them started as a DJ and then went rapping. <laughs> I think I probably did. I DJed rap. We did it all. It's fucking spun on my head, did graffiti, you know, sold lemonade, Lego, fucking used to light ants on fire and shit and just like terrorize insects before I had like a real, you know, theories on life, you know what I mean? We did all that shit, all that. But you said, okay, DJing is the real... I like just the... settled with DJing. I mean, I, don't, I, do it all. I still do it all. Not really a great DJ. You are. I'm not really a great no technical time. DJ, but I'll play the right song. You know what I mean? I'll, I'll, I'll so would it, you I'll say, work. would you say it's not always about the technique? It's more about also entertaining and knowing what to play? Yeah, it depends on the DJ. You know, everybody has their own spice they add to it. Some are more technical, you know, like a uh, Mixmaster mic or a Qbert, you know. Okay. You know, the people like me are not as technical. But you I still, I have my way of, I, I do my way, you know. You're more into vinyl or Serato? I'm into Serino. It's like a combo of Serato and vinyl they're coming out with now. Okay. Yeah, Serino. You gonna use that tonight? I might. I don't know if they <laughs> cut the check, you know. <laughs> All right. So, um, what led up to you becoming Eminem's DJ? How did y'all meet and... Oh, man. Through the management, Paul. He's been a friend of mine a long time. We just got, got to see him blow up and watch the success happen. And just the so timing he, was right. So, he made his management call your management? No, Paul. <laughs> I've known Paul for a long time. When he first moved to New York, he was actually my lawyer, Paul. Okay. One of my early days of doing beats. And then Eminem blew up, pew, and things changed. You know, but I always stayed in contact with all of them, so it was good. It was always a, very motivating to see that happen. So, um, you're also a producer assigned to Shady Records? I don't know why people always ask me that. Like, I'm not signed to Shady Records. No? No, I'm not signed to Shady Records. I'm affiliated in many ways. Okay. I'm DJ, do a lot of work with them. That's like, you know, that's my team, but I'm not, as an artist, I'm not signed to them. Okay, every, every site reporting about you, almost every site online is saying that you're signed to Shady Records. So know, maybe that's why everybody's that asking stuff, you that. You know, that's, you know, <laughs> Wikipedia and all that. I know you got to do your Googles and check your Wikipedias out and see what's really good. But I don't, hey. Talking about affiliations, you're also known for your affiliation with Mop Deep. Uh, yes. <laughs> I never got the tattoo, you know. I never got the little tattoo that they you, all have. You yeah, still can't get it. It's it's uh, <laughs> it's it's there, but it's like clear and only it's like a black light. When you see, it's glowing in the dark tattoo. So it's glowing in the dark. Yeah, you can't see it right now. Okay. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah, those are my people, Mob Deep. So how did y'all get together? How did that work out? Uh, when I moved to New York through Mugs, just like clicked up. We're all the same height. You know? How are you feeling about them going separate ways for a second? Ah, that was just... Hey, I knew it wasn't anything, you know, I'm sure. You, you, knew, you, you knew they was going to work it out? Yeah, <laughs> pretty, much, pretty much, yeah. Did you ever, like, get to talk to them about it or get to, you know, tell them to make peace and, like... It wasn't necessary. You, you know what I mean? They had, they had it under control. Okay. Yeah. Have you ever been in a rap group? No, I have not. It was one of the most impossible things to do. <laughs> and for somebody to be in anywhere in music that long, man, that's that's amazing, man. Like I just told y'all, when you own your shit, there's nothing else to say. It's the Eminem and 8 Mile theory. At the end of 8 Mile, Eminem got on that microphone, said everything that that guy possibly could say bad about him, he owned his shit, and the guy couldn't even say anything. 